Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 24 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I am checking out all the goodies I got from my quarry. Let's take a look at our gems chest. Uh-oh, it's full. That could be a problem. I wonder what happens. What do you guys figure happened to all the stuff that tried to go in here but couldn't because the chest was full? If you had guessed that it found its way to the default route, you were probably correct. Yes, that's what it appears to have done. So any excess items that were not fitting in this chest wound up over here. Now, here's the deal. I stumbled upon this because I was letting my quarry run for a little bit and I came in and checked on it and realized things were getting low. So I went out to my quarry and turned everything off. Um, so no worries. We, uh, you know, we'll... Uh, have to set something up though to prevent any kind of overflow because if that quarry had finished running we probably would have ran out of inventory space and here let me explain to you guys what will happen with a quarry if you were to um, go ahead and let it overflow oh and there's a pig with a tortoise on his head so flying over to my quarry we can see that I have in fact turned everything off so the engines are not running at the moment uh, but what would happen if uh, we let this continue to run well Basically what would have happened was um, the ender chest here would have stopped being able to send things to places because the, the overflow chest there, that, uh, that excess uh, miscellaneous chest, the default route would have filled up, and then the ender chest would have had nowhere else to send items. So the logistics pipes would have stopped pulling items out of the ender chest. Um, anything from the quarry here then would have filled up this ender chest, and any excess items that couldn't fit into the ender chest would be spewed out onto the ground by the quarry. So it would just start shooting stuff all over the place. Now I think I'm getting kind of towards the bottom of the quarry down there, so I do need to make sure that we don't lose out on things like diamonds. So why don't we implement a little system here to make sure that if this ender chest ever does fill up, we won't have a problem. Also, I'm really tired of running back and forth with this quarry. I should have built it close to my base, but oh well. I have an idea, something that might make things a little bit easier. So I used my assembly table here to make a couple nifty items, the iron and gate um, and some red piping wire. We're going to use these guys uh, to set up something very cool to automate some interesting stuff with our quarry. First off, uh, I'm going to need a couple things. I think the only really important thing I'm going to need is a cobblestone structure pipe. So let's get some cobblestone pipes, just one of those, and a piece of gravel, just one of those. That's all I'm going to need. Uh, so hopefully those things will show up pretty quickly. There's my cobblestone transport pipe and my gravel. Just combine them in a crafting table and you get yourself a cobblestone structure pipe. The nice thing about cobblestone structure pipes is they kind of just sit there and don't connect to anything, but they're useful for um, interacting with machines and I'll show you about that in just a moment. So these gates are very useful uh, because you can use them to read all kinds of interesting stuff about things, which is important. Let's give you an example. First off, I'm going to hook up a gate right next to my quarry. What kind of things can we read about the quarry? Well, on the left side here, you can see your conditionals. Um, right now, it's reading information about the pipe that it's connected to, whether or not power is traversing through the pipe. Uh, this line here would turn red if this condition was true. So if there were power traveling through the pipe, this line would turn red. But there's not, so it's not red. Uh, pipe empty is the opposite condition, so that is true. The pipe is currently empty, uh, and that's why it's turned red, because this condition is true. The other thing we can say is power overloaded. Is there too much power traveling through the pipe? Remember, these things can only travel, uh, can only send certain amounts of power through the pipe, so if you're trying to send too much power through this pipe, this power overloaded conditional would be also true. Uh, your other options here are, is, uh, is there a redstone signal attached that it's currently on? No, it is not. Is there a redstone signal that's off? Well, yeah, there is no redstone signal, so that's true. Work done or work scheduled, okay? So here's your different conditionals about what we want. What I'm gonna do is set it up so that this quarry emits a redstone pipe wire, which is this stuff, whenever this work is scheduled for this quarry, meaning whenever the quarry has something to do, and by attaching red pipe wire here, I can say emit a red pipe signal. Cool, I like it. All right, so that's what we're gonna do but I might actually want to change that up. Let's see, I'll show you in a moment here. Over here, I'm going to place down that cobblestone structure pipe. I'm also going to place some red pipe wire here. And here I'm going to set it up to read information about the attached inventory. For that, I can see, are there items currently inventory? Nope. Uh, is the inventory empty? Yes, it is. Is the inventory full? No. Is there space in inventory? Yes. Okay, good. Cool. Um, so what I might want to do is set it up so that depending on, I want to make sure that both there's space in inventory here and there's still work that needs to be done. Both of these things need to be uh, the case before I uh, turn on these biogas engines. And I can do so using an iron and gate. Uh, I think I'm short just one gate, but that's okay. I'll go make another one real quick. Um, 
basically what I can do is run some pipe wiring over here and all this pipe wire is going to connect to each other so this red signal from the um, quarry over here is going to carry through and now I'm going to place a gate here and I'm going to say hey um, in the event that you're receiving a red piping signal there it is, red pipe signal on, then go ahead and emit a redstone signal. And you can see it's going to turn on the uh, engine here and it's going to start running and allow our quarry to operate again. Cool, right? Uh, but I wanna make sure that this thing only runs um, under certain conditions. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of reverse this. I'm gonna say, hey, if your work is done, go ahead and emit a red pipe signal. So, you know, do that. I'm also gonna come over here and say, hey, if the inventory is full, go ahead and emit a red pipe signal, okay? And then over here, I'm gonna say red pipe signal off, redstone signal. So what this means is in the event that the quarry has finished doing its work, it's gonna emit a red pipe signal, which will then turn off the redstone signal, which will then turn off the engines, okay? Or in the event that the ender chest fills up, okay, so inventory full, we emit a red pipe signal, and again, it will turn off the engines. So that's kind of the plan. That's what I'm thinking at least. What do you guys think? Pretty cool? So then it's real easy. I just gotta say, hey, uh, red pipe signal off, redstone signal. Hey, what did I do here? Red pipe signal off, ah, redstone signal, not red pipe signal, there we go. Yeah, gotta be careful with that thing. So red pipe signal off, redstone signal. Red pipe signal off, redstone signal. Cool, right? So all these machines can operate. Um, all the um, engines will get turned on whenever uh, we both have work to do from the quarry. So when the, when the quarry's done, when it hits bedrock there, it's going to emit a red pipe signal and turn off the engines so we don't waste any biogas. At least, that's the plan. So now that we've got all this stuff running, and I'll get another gate here, but I think we're actually kind of close to the bottom of uh, the quarry here, so I might not worry about it. What I think I'm gonna do, though, is head back to my base and start dealing with some of the inventory issues that we've got, because obviously I need some larger chests. Meet you guys back there. So I think what I wanna do is upgrade to diamond chests, at least on the one inventory slot where I'm having an issue with uh, space. Let's take a look. Right over here, my gems and dust chest, we're gonna upgrade this guy to a diamond chest, the largest chest available. So now, um, at the very least, we shouldn't have to worry too much about this inventory stuff, at least for a bit. You guys can go in here. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, maybe I lied. Maybe we still do have inventory issues. Sorry, right, I have an idea or two. Uh, marble, we should just organize our stuff a little bit here. Cobblestone doesn't belong in here at all. Um, everything else is actual junk, right? There's nothing in here. Ooh, lapis, do you want that out of there? That looks good. All right, lapis goes away. I'll put um, the marble in here, and that looks pretty good. And then we'll just sort some stuff like you. Cool. All right, so now that we've got that all sorted for the most part, uh, what I think I should do is actually convert some of my coal into coal blocks. Let's find a good way to do that. You know what I might want to do? Hmm, I have an idea. Let's do this. I'm going to, first off, get myself a coal block, and I'm going to make sure that that's sitting in here so that we have uh, that whole, hey, if you're a coal block, you land in here situation going on. Okay, now let's actually, I'm gonna store this stuff for now. And I'm going to come up with something very nifty. Let's take a look at factorization. Because factorization has a bunch of cool blocks in it. One of the ones I wanna look at is the packager. All right, so I'm gonna need a crafting table, a piston, and a couple pieces of iron. Cool. So let's see, a crafting table, a piston, and a couple pieces of iron. Piston, crafting table, packager. Nice. Let's go find a place to put this. We're also going to want, uh, let's see, we're probably going to want a basic logistics pipe. Yeah, that should do. And a piece of coal. And while I'm at it, I'll grab a couple stacks of coal. That looks pretty sharp. All right, let's head downstairs. Oh, you know what else I probably want is uh, some stone pipes. I'll get 20 because I have no idea how many I'm gonna need. I can always ask for more when I'm down there. 
All right, so we've got way too much coal going on, right? But we can turn it into blocks, can't we? We can see all kinds of items filtering around here. So let's look at what we could do with our coal uh, to make things a little bit more, I don't know, let's say efficient. Yeah, with space storage. Uh, over here looks like a perfect spot for this to occur. Okay, uh, right there. I'm going to go ahead and place my basic logistics pipe. Ta-da! Everybody's green, everybody's happy. Cool. Uh, to that, I'm going to hook up the packager. And the packager, what this does is anytime it receives a certain number of items, uh, in some cases it can be either four or nine, and it'll try and combine them in a stack of four or nine like so. So if you send it four stone, for example, it's going to package it into stone bricks because the recipe for stone bricks is four stone in a square like that. If you send it coal, it'll automatically compress it down into a coal block. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure this guy to uh, send all the coal right here. So any piece of coal that enters this network is going to land right here. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just not do that just yet because what I want to do is make sure that everything's cool. Uh, now I'm pretty sure if I, my memory serves me correctly, the only output face for this block uh, can be the bottom. So we want to pull items out of the bottom. And then I think what we probably want to do is... Yeah, I got an idea or two. Let's get a few pieces of sand, like four, please. There we go, request successful. Thank you. Oh, I guess I need four more. That'll do. And then let's see, how else do I want to do this? I'll probably want to get a couple things here. Let me get a few items and I'll be right back. So one of the first things I'm making is a pulsating chipset. This is an ender pearl and a piece of redstone in the assembly table. Uh, the other thing I want to make sure I have some of are some redstone chipsets. And I'll be right back. So what I want to do is combine a gate with an iron chipset and one of those pulsating chipsets, and I can make an autarkic gate. These gates are very useful. Um, with Buildcraft, you can pull items out of inventories, similar to the way we were doing it with um, the thermal expansion pipes. But we're going to do it with Buildcraft pipes because I want it to hook up to our logistics system. And for that, we're going to need wooden transport pipes. These will extract items out of inventories. Now, there's two ways to get items uh, out of inventories using the wooden transport pipe. You can either create a uh, redstone um, engine, uh, which is the cheaper method, but it also takes up another block space, right? So I could have a redstone engine, we could have it uh, activating and working on the pipe, and it would pull items out of the inventory that the pipe is attached to. Or we can use um, the autarkic gates, and these guys are able to actually activate and interact with the wooden transport pipes to pull items out of inventories. The last thing I want to get is a sandstone pipe. Now, these are very actually useful and nifty pipes. I'll show you exactly what they're for in just a moment here. Let's take a look. So first off, uh, what we want to do is pull items out of this inventory, right? So that's kind of the plan. So in order to do that, we want to hook up a wooden transport pipe, okay? And uh, let's go ahead and throw, you know, nine of these in here. Cool. Everybody's happy. Perfect. And uh, once we have them out of that inventory, we want to pipe them around behind the inventory here. Now, if I were to do this, you'll see that the pipe is connecting there. Now, I could use a plug to prevent these from connecting. We've seen plugs before, but if we want to be super cool about it, we can use a sandstone transport pipe, which is a special pipe which only connects to other pipes. It won't connect to any blocks or inventories. So you can see it's not connecting the inventory there, it's only connecting to the other pipes. And then up here, where it'll hit an intersection, and then the intersection is a logistics transport pipe, so it'll say, hey, uh, you're a block of coal, I know what to do with you. So let's get this thing pulling out. All I gotta do is say, hey, under, uh, just like with the conditionals of the, um, Thing. Let's see, how do I get this guy to open up? Maybe it doesn't like me in bat form. There we go. Uh, we can say under certain conditions we want to activate this. What condition do I want? I want redstone signal off. I want this thing to be running all the time because it doesn't hurt. And I'm going to say energy pulser. And what that should do is pull the block of coal out of the inventory and it'll send it along the pipe there. And it'll do it a little bit slowly, obviously, because it's a you know wooden build craft pipe. 
and we've only got smooth stone pipes back there. If I had golden pipes, things would run a little bit faster, but we're not too concerned. Oh, there it goes. Now, once it hits the intersection here, it should uh, enter the logistics network, at which point the logistics network will know what to do with it and uh, ship it off to where it belongs. There it goes. It's sending it off in that direction. Excellent. That's what I wanted to see. Cool. Go along, little guy. And we should get that block of coal making its way up there. Let's see how right I am about that. Well, I've got two blocks of coal now, so that's good. Um, now here's where we can test things out really well. What I'm gonna do is head downstairs and see what happens. So if we take a look and we watch what happens when coal enters our, a our logistics network. It should zip down here. Uh, why are you going over there? You should be going the other direction. All oh, right, because I didn't set this up. Haha. -ha. Uh, coal is the requested item. There we go. Now, any coal entering the network will zip along straight over to there. Because remember, uh, that requested item there should take priority over. It should take priority over the inventory thingy up there. Request item coal. Don't make a liar out of me now. Interesting. Why is coal still going that way? It shouldn't be, honestly. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. Provider pipe and polymorphic item, yes. Cool. Interesting. Oh boy, look, we're starting to fill up our inventory awfully quickly here. We gotta fix this pretty fast, I think, because we are getting desperate. All right, let's take a look at how we can probably fix this. Because you should not be taking priority like you are. I thought this thing would be a higher priority. A logistics pipe. Hmm. Let me just double check this information and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm gonna try something else here. Let's see if this works. Is it this guy that I wanna make? Oh, it's the item sync module. Green, green, oh, okay, just flip these. There we go, item sync module. I'm gonna try this with a logistics chassis pipe and an item sync module, and we'll see if that takes the priority properly. It might be because it's a basic logistics pipe. We're gonna find out in about a second. Item sync module, and then we'll set the requested items to this guy. This really should be taking precedence over the um, the, the um, polymorphic item sync we've got up there. So let's see, coal. Still no? You're kidding me. That's really strange. All right, give me a minute. All right, guys, we're back. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, clearing out this inventory completely of coal. This really should be taking a higher priority. I think it might be the version of logistics pipes I have is a little bit old. Um, I'm, we're still running version uh, 11 of the pack, and I think version 12 will update it and fix that Tesseract bug and maybe would fix this as well. I'll let you guys know once I'm sure, but let's see what happens now if I throw some coal in here. It should make its way. Ah, there we go. Cool. So this should be a higher priority than that polymorphic, but... Now you can see here I was also using a chest because I wasn't sure if it was maybe the packager that was causing a problem or not. So let's get that chest out of there and we'll throw the packager back. And now we'll see what happens. Cole, go for it. There we go. Nice. So any and all coal that enters the network should hit this thing and uh, kind of get taken care of. Nice, that's pretty cool. Um, now another thing we could do actually, ooh, that's actually a better idea. Maybe I should do this. Um, just because I wanna make sure that uh, we kind of convert everything. Yeah, I got a better idea. Let's put all this back in here. Um, and I had moved everything here temporarily. Wow, that's a lot of inventory space that I need to clean up. Um, we'll be taking care of all this very quickly. There we go. Uh, what I think I'll do is, because this has a provider module on it, we can actually throw some coal in here as well. Uh, why don't I get a supplier module? Um, so there's a passive supplier module. That's not what I want. I want the supplier logistics pipes, which is just going to be uh, a couple pieces of lapis. 
So what this will do is instead of like waiting for the coal to get in there, um, it'll uh, or it'll actively pull it from the provider pipes that we've got going on. So let's take our basic, we'll convert it to a supplier, and we'll just keep this thing supplied. Because the other problem is I want to convert all my coal in bulk, and if I overload this thing, like if I throw like all these stacks of coal in here right now, um, they would kind of go in here and kind of overflow this thing. It wouldn't all fit. So by using the, the supplier, I think we'll be in better shape. So let me get back there and get that stupid piece of junk. There we go. All right, you gotta love bat form for getting into small spaces. It's pretty much the best thing ever. All right, so here, and then we've got the supplier logistics pipe, and then I configured this guy to keep, I don't know, half a stack of coal in there, sound good? Uh, let's go with 36, actually. Um, we could, well, we could say like, actually, let's say nine. That sounds like a good number. So there we go, it's actively requesting coal. So every time uh, you know it can, it's gonna say, hey, give me some more coal, give me some more coal, and it'll kind of keep it as full as possible. In fact, I think I am going to set it up to 36, that should be good. So this way it'll kind of keep running as fast as it can. Because right now it's like nine and then it waits a few seconds and another nine. This will kind of keep it going. Might even want more than that. Because, yeah, it's, uh, it's moving even faster than that. So let's throw 54, sound good? Yeah. Yeah, that should be all right. So now it'll kind of convert all my coal into coal blocks. And then the coal blocks should get routed back up to this spot right here. There we go, 28 blocks of coal. Nice. It's actually doing a really good job of that. I like it. So I'm just gonna dump all this coal in here and it should start um, pulling it out. So we should see coal disappearing here and coal blocks showing up. Now there's one more thing we're gonna wanna do to help maintain this. See, look, all coal's disappearing. Um, we should make a crafting logistics pipe and a crafting table. Because if we're storing all of our coal in coal blocks, what are we gonna do when we wanna use coal? Are we gonna have to request a block and then convert it into coal and then other, da, 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 all this other work, right? And what if we have like a machine that wants to constantly be requesting coal, right? So those are two other things that we're gonna have to worry about. So what I uh, just did is I wanna make a um, crafting logistics pipe combo and I'll grab from here one of these blocks of coal. Hey, come back here, you. There we go, blocks of coal, all right. And it's really simple. Go down here and we'll add it to our crafting network. And we'll simply say logistics crafting table, logistics crafting pipe, one block of coal equals nine coal. And then we use um, the logistics, uh, where'd that thingy go? Didn't I get or request a uh, pipe. I could have sworn I did. Oh wait, it's there. <laughs> derp, dire derp. All right, so now this uh, network should know how to convert um, blocks of coal into coal. Pretty cool, right? So now any machine that needs it, which is more important, right? Like if I wanted to be manual about it, I could just say, hey, you know, request blocks of coal and then, you know, convert it to coal manually, but let's say I had like a machine where I wanted to automate uh, converting coal uh, or using coal or something like that, right? So that's why we would want this uh, conversion set up. So that was actually really quick. Um, I might want to do something similar for redstone at some point, um, and this will kind of help compress all this stuff that we've got. I probably want to do something similar for lapis as well. You know what I could do? Ooh, this should actually be pretty easy as a matter of fact. Let's get some of you guys here. Yeah. In fact, I can do this as an all-in-one. It just occurred to me. You and you, that should be pretty solid. Anything else here I wanna compress down? I don't know if saltpeter can be converted into... block form. Sulfur might be convertible into block form. Maybe not. I know these gems can be. 
But basically anything I want to convert into block form should be as easy as adding to the keep supplied module. Because I'm using a supplier module now, I should be able to do this all in one. So like I can do something like this. So it's going to request the coal and keep that in there. Um, as a matter of fact, let's do, darn it, give me some more coal. See, there's none in the network now, but I should be able to request one. And what it should do is go get it, and the excess would probably wind up going into the default route. So what we're kind of, kind of going to want to do here is say keep nine in at a time, and full. I think full mode means it'll only only request nine if there's nine available. And the same for redstone. So only if there's nine available is what it should do. So now it's getting the logistics. So you can see it's going to bounce the items back, right? It tried to get redstone. The inventory was full, so it bounced it back. And this thing should automatically convert all my lapis, redstone, and coal into block form. And uh, if I wanted to be super cool about it, I could also teach how to convert the, the block form back to regular form into my crafting network here. Yeah, let's do that real quick. So we're going to need two more of you and two more of you. Request successful. Good. All kinds of stuff happening. Nice. I like it. And there we go. So now I should be able to quest the block form if I don't have it on me. So one lapis block, one, I don't have redstone blocks yet, but I can make one. Just so we can teach it for future use. We will soon have a redstone block. And we want the logistics chassis pipes here, like so. Import, oh right. Uh, we'll do lapis here. Doesn't matter where in the crafting grid you put it, just like a regular old crafting table. And then we'll say import, import, and then I want to grab out of my white, white, white ender pouch my sign creator. Nifty. I like it. So this thing should still be converting stuff. And of course it's going to be a little bit slower now because I have it converting multiple things. And I think you should not be requesting just one piece of coal. There we go. It should be doing full requests. But I'll keep an eye on it and you know in theory after a little bit of time has passed, we should have converted all of our lapis and coal and redstone. Neat, right? Uh, another thing we might want to get rid of is appetite, but I don't think there's any simple crafting combiner for that. I mean, we can crate it, but I mean, the crates still exist. Yeah, crates were kind of here and then back again and then gone again and then going away and then coming back. But uh, that's something for another time. There's only one way to, to dump your appetite, and that's uh, by crating it with uh, forestry. Alright, so let me get a stone brick here again. One. And then we should be cool. Alright, so it does look like things are working pretty well for us. Obviously it's requesting more things than it can handle in one go, but that's okay. Uh, it should manage to keep up. Alright, so what I'm going to do is between this episode and next, keep an eye on this package or make sure it's working the way I think it is. I'm pretty sure, like I said, because I put it on full mode, it's only going to request nine items at a time. It's not going to allow, you know, um, you know, four pieces of redstone to sit in there because we don't have more than four, right? So that's the theory, at least. We're going to have to kind of keep an eye on that and make sure that's the case. And I'll come back next episode and let you know if I'm correct about that setting. But as you can see now, we're much more compact with the storage of our redstone, lapis, and coal. Uh, we've significantly compressed 
compressed down the amount of lapis and stuff we have. As a matter of fact, I could probably throw some of it onto my pickaxe and my sword to bump up the looting and fortune to level 3. I should probably do that. But not now, because for now, we unfortunately do have to wrap up the episode. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, we managed to get a lot done. We automated the quarry to make sure that it turns off whenever uh, it's either finished running, and I think it's, you know, it's still going, because we've got a bunch of cobblestone flowing through here, right? Yeah. So it's still running, um, and it will turn off the engines when it's done running. We also have, like, a really good amount um, of this stuff right here. Tons and tons of biomass, which I'm happy for. Uh, so we've got a good steady supply of that running through, and you know what? I'm pretty pleased with this packaging setup. I, uh, I thought I would need to have multiple packagers, but by using the supplier pipe, it was kind of like, hey, I'll use the supplier pipe for one reason, and then I decided, oh, wait, it actually has a better benefit. I can use this for multiple things. I might even throw, like, glowstone in there or something like that, but, eh, let's not get crazy. I don't have too much glowstone, and, um, you know, I know you can convert it to one, but can you convert it back? Eh, I don't know about that. I don't think you can convert it back that easily. I could use a block breaker or something. Oh, macerators can do it. Okay, or pulverizers. But anyway, I think we've got a better storage solution now, at least. I might even start compressing down other things like the peridots and the sapphires and the rubies, but we don't have too much of those, so I'm not worried about it. We just had a ton of coal and redstone, which will be compressed pretty quickly. Anyway, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I really do hope you're enjoying Season 6 so far. I've got plenty more things in the works. I do want to actually look at a way to travel between here and my quarry land a little bit better, but... I'm not sure if I want to go crazy with it just yet because I'm thinking uh, I, I have a better idea for a way to mine things a little bit more efficiently and a little bit quicker, um, but we'll have to see about that. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Like I said, Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.